What a beautiful day. Uh, the band started in um, 1988 in a pub in Brighton, really. Um, Mark and Jeremy met each other over a pint and got chatting about the sort of 80s music scene, the late 80s music scene. And they were a bit basically disenfranchised with what was going on, you know, it was, it was a pretty bad scene generally. Um, and, you know, they, it just seemed like the end of something, so they just decided to sort of, their musical tastes were very similar and their ideas were very similar, so they got together and Jeremy and Charlie had been playing anyway in a band. Um, so it sort of began there really, and then they got John in. Um, I suppose a few months later, um, started gigging and that was it really. So we've always been accused of being particularly politically minded, but to tell you the truth, we're not. You can only sing from your own experience, can you? And I think, you know, a lot of people agree with this, because a lot of people buy the records come see us. Politics and music, I, I think it's a, it's a dangerous area, because you can get labelled as a political band, and it's a label that which, which we could have done without, really. Um, we do stand up on certain issues and, you know, I, I believe in sort of justice, basically, um, and freedom of choice. Um, and whenever that's threatened, then you have to sort of make a stand and, and say something. And I, I think it counts for whoever you are, whether you're a musician, an artist or whatever. Um, so there's definitely a place for it in, music, you know, politics and music. You know, we'd like to sing about things that move us immediately. And, uh, you know, quite often something will jar us and we'll sing about something and then, you know, a while after we might change our mind about it because the effect has worn off, you know, but at the time it's, it's good to sing, I think, you know, about things that affect you emotionally strongly, you know, it's good to put your, put your neck on the line, even if you are wrong. Well, Beef Head was about um, Stonehenge in 1985, really, um, when when the police or the government sent in uh, loads of unmarked cops, basically from all over the country, SBG and stuff like that, um, in against the trucks in in a bean field quite near the Stonehenge. Um, just before the summer solstice, which was the traditional time when we used to go and have a festival there. Um, and it was very brutal um, and violent sort of, um, attack, really, on a bunch of young, defenceless, you know, hippies, really, I suppose, you know, whatever, travellers, you know, who lived on buses and stuff. It was terrible. And the point is, because the, the festival, Stonehenge Festival, had been going for 11 years, basically, and in, in British law, if a festival is it goes in the same place for 12 years, it becomes legal after that, and so that's why they wanted to stop the uh, the festival happening. The ITN officers were mysteriously raided, and the film disappeared. Um, and from BBC, it disappeared and from, from everywhere. Um, and basically, you know, they didn't want it getting out, but it did. You know, um, the all... cameraman kept it basically. What we, the ITN camera crew, and myself as a reporter, have seen in the last. 30 minutes here on this field has been some of the most brutal police treatment of people that I've witnessed in my entire career as a journalist. There must be an inquiry. And you know, that's basically what the song's about. Um, I wrote it after seeing the videos and stuff and sort of very quickly after the event really um, because it just totally you know amazed me um, and in fact it changed my dad's vote I mean we were as a band not allowed to vote in the last election um, 
because we were away and they refused us to be able to do it by post, which um, was very strange and bizarre. And, you know. The classic sort of government argument is that the drugs are the evil of society and that drugs undermine society. But what they don't understand is it's the society that they've made that makes people want to take drugs in the first place, you know. People wouldn't take drugs if they were living in an ideal world. And if you legalised everything, basically the money that you'd save on the crime rate literally dropping through the floor, you could put into education, you could put into the backup systems that you'd need for the you know, inevitable amount of addicts that, that would increase at the start of legalisation. But after that it would drop considerably. And, uh, and you'd have next to no crime rate and you'd have loads more money to spend on people, you know, and education is the main thing as far as drugs go. You can't justify selling fags and booze and, and not, not allowing people to smoke dope, you know. It's just, it's, it's been proven that it's less harmful than either. Um, and I suspect it's less harmful than freezing carbon dioxide from cars in inner city areas all day. Um, you know, so it's, it does seem stupid to spend the money on chasing down people who, who like a puff, um, you know, and spending thousands, millions of billions of pounds on it when, you know, they should be cleaning up the environment and working on education and stuff like that. I get tired of politics, I know politics is corrupt and, you know, most things are corrupt these days, law and everything. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'd like to see other people sort of possibly taking up the, the flag a bit more. <laughs> This is your democracy Yeah, this is your bureaucracy I call it damned hypocrisy If you ask me, I'll tell you about your life Terribly disappointing answer there <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean artistically?